Hey everyone, welcome back to another Godzilla Battleline video, and today I am coming at you with the most requested video I've had in quite some time, and it is an updated leader tier list guide. Now, the last one we had of these was in May of 2022, and at the time we had like 12 leaders, right? And since then, what have we gotten since May? Uh, Ultraman, d destroy uh, Shin Godzilla, we got fucking uh, Unit 1, Godzilla 2004, uh, I think that's it. Right off the top of my head, I think that's it. Hedera and Desgador are, are this month. Okay, so that's the other two. So there we go. So there's a lot more leaders to talk about this month. The last video was already like 30 minutes. This one is going to be something like that or maybe more. So I'm going to get jump right into it. I'm going to have above me the abilities of the leaders so you can see them. I'm going to talk briefly about all the leaders. And we're going to go right down this list, how I have them organized. It should be alphabetical order. I know Unit 1 is at the end, but that's because my PNG for her was labeled as Unit 1 and not Ava 1. So now she's at the end, and I'm pretty sure Mecha King, King Ghidorah and Mecha Godzilla are in their right spots too. And just so you don't get on my ass until later in the video, yes, Jet Jaguar and Kiryu are here. They are just hidden in the corner because I cropped it out of the screen. All right, well, let's uh, get this list started then. First up on the chopping block is Batra, and her, uh, or his, whatever it is, ability reads, Prism Beam, energy cost 1, Cooldown 90 seconds. Good cooldown, good energy cost. Deals 40 damage in a straight line and increases the movement speed of all allied aerial units on the battlefield by 50% for 15 seconds. Now, this is not going to be the first monster on this list that improves movement speed, and it is certainly not the best movement speed improver that there is. Now, the ability itself for improved movement speed of the flyers could be good and could be useful, if Batra wasn't one of the best units you could possibly be using on the field. Batra is going to be first up on this list and first up in the why would you do this to yourself category. Because why would you put Batra as your leader when you could use Batra on the field? I know there's a lot of players, like a lot of the top end players who have all their stuff leveled up that'll tell you Batra isn't required on the field. But if you're a mid game player, early game player, even an end game player that's not necessarily a whale, Putting Batra on your team does make a noticeable difference in how powerful your pushes can be, and without being able to provide that damage buff, when, you know, whenever you place him on the field, he's just gonna be a mediocre leader. You could use Space Godzilla on the field as an alternative, but Batra is cheaper, and Batra flies. Batra's more fun, in my opinion. But Space Godzilla is also super sick. We're not talking. To, we're not talking about the abilities on the fields. We're not talking about the abilities on the fields. Batra is really great on the field really okay as a leader but the fact that you would have to slot him in as your leader and not on the field and the leader ability is in nowhere near in comparison to how good they are on the field they're going in the why would you do this to yourself category because why wouldn't you just use them on the field all right so the next one we got is Biolante now Biolante does not see a lot of play these days doesn't see a lot of play these days, but back in the day, Biolante was absolutely fucking busted. Biolante was so good. So good. The ability still is really good. What happened was they changed the cooldown of the ability, right? I believe the ability cooldown was like 30 seconds or something like that. And it lasted for 30 seconds as well. So like you could pretty much have it up the whole game and then they changed it to 60 seconds. I... I think that's what the, the nerf was. I don't remember it. God, it was probably almost a year ago at this point when that got changed. But regardless, let's read what it says. Acid Slap energy cost is 1. Cooldown is 60 seconds, which is very, very good. Very, very good. Deals 200 damage in a straight line and increases the movement speed of your units in bodies of water of allied ground units on the, on the battlefield. I didn't read that exactly 100%, but that's what it reads. And it's going to increase the... Ground units speed in water by 300%. And increases damage dealt of allied long range attacking units on the battlefield by 20% for 30 seconds. Or maybe hers was 45 second cooldown and you had 30 seconds and then you had 15 seconds of downtime and then you could proc it again. That's what it was. I'm pretty sure it was 45 seconds or something like that. So this ability is still very good. It is still very good. It is not uh, as... I was going to say it's not as usable as it was. It... I don't see a reason why we're not running Biolante leaders now, especially with the damage, um, not damage, with the, uh, recent changes to how characters are leveled up and increased and the, the prices and all that. I don't see a reason why we're not going back to playing as Biolante. Uh, her stats are alright, her attack speed is 2.8, so that's not incredible, right? But she does do, she does have an AoE, 
and she can give your units a significant boost. And, okay, long-ranged units are going to get a 20% boost for 30 seconds. What is a long-ranged unit off the top of my head? Uh, unit 1, Ultraman, U Godzilla Ultima, Hedera, Desgadora, Destroya, um, Godzilla 04, I think, is long-range? Maybe he's medium. Could be long-range. I don't know. Uh, who else is long range? I don't know. Super X, Batra. There's a lot. There's a lot of really good units that are classified as long range. And Biolante will hook them up with some really solid power. Her attack speed is a little on the lacking side, though. 2.8 seconds. Not great, but it is an AOA, AOE, so you have to keep that in mind. I like her a lot. I don't think she's meta, but I do think she's a great leader. I think she's a good choice. Like, not really a lot of people are using her on the field right now because of she can't hit the flyers. So she is susceptible to a lot of the more meta pieces. If you want to use her, you like Biolante, she's your favorite monster or something, put her as your leader. Put some long-range units on there. You cooking. You cooking with gas. It's a good ability. I like it a lot. She doesn't really see too much play these days, but... um. I like it, and you can build some really strong decks around her uh, leader ability. Alright, so we got the newcomer, Desgadora. Just recently, in this very season that this video goes live, got a boost to make him a leader. What does he do? We went over it in a video earlier in December, but we'll check out the ability again. Strong, violent, advanced Thunderquake, which first of all has the seal of my approval for the best goddamn special ability name in this freaking game. Um, it costs one, which is already really good, and the cooldown is 150 seconds, so that's sick. What it does is it deals a burn damage, uh, which doesn't specify what the burn damage does, either in the stats page or this page, but it says 150 damage in a fan shape, so I'm going to assume the burn is something along the lines of 150 damage. I doubt it. It might just be 50 or whatever it is on the regular Deskidora. Damage in a fan shape, and then doubles the cost recovery rate, for five seconds okay it will double your energy rate for five seconds this is going to net you like in the beginning of the match maybe like five energy or something like that if you wait in the match because you this is 150 second cooldown so that's only like it's like a minute it's like two minutes 20 seconds or something like that right so tw two minutes 30 maybe two no i think it might be two minutes 20 no, it's 2 minutes 30. It's 2 minutes and 30 seconds, so you could use this like twice a game. If you wait for the overtime, where the energy production speed is increased, it's like 1.25 times and there's like 1.5 times, you can get like a 3 times energy boost towards the end of the match. And people are not paying attention to that, and to be completely honest, I didn't even think about that when I was making my leader review for this character. But you will double the energy production after it already gets doubled at the towards the end of the match so this can make a really late game push just pop out of nowhere absolutely clutch up a late game play it, it it's crazy it's really really good i like them a lot early to mid game okay late game really difficult to beat a push when your opponent is generating energy at three times your rate right or two times your rate it's it, it's crazy so i think desgadora is a good leader I think, I, I think he's a great leader. I'm putting him above Biolante just because um, I think the ability is going to help you win a lot more matches in a clutch time. Biolante is going to be really good overall for the matchup with pressure on your team or the enemy team. But I, I really think, I don't know, somewhere along this, I think they're pretty close. I think maybe Desgadora might see more play. Let's take a look at the stats real quick. 2.8 attack speed and the piercing. I think it might be around here somewhere. I put Mecha King Ghidorah above Biolante last season. Mecha King Ghidorah does a very similar thing. I'll keep uh, Deskidora here. I, I, I think that that's probably fair. All right, so one of my favorite Godzilla monsters, Destroya, and the variable slicer attack. Now, there is some mixed feelings regarding this. I got an itch specific ability in the arena so let's read it and you can make up your own minds so variable slicer cost three cooldown is 90 seconds cooldown time is good cost i don't really like the cost too much it reads 
that the variable slicer attack deals 150 damage to a rectangular area and increases the attack power of allied close range attacking units on the battlefield by 30 percent for 15 seconds okay you may be asking how is this any different from something like Biolante? Biolante does something very similar, but for long-ranged only. The reason I do not like Destroya as much as Biolante is because at the moment, there are a lot less close-range characters than you would think, right? So what's the first one that comes to your mind? Anguirus? I'm pretty sure Anguirus is listed as a medium range. Where's my Anguirus? I'm going to set this by level. Anguirus, upgrade... Stats, right here, reach is medium, not close. And Gears' reach is medium. And Gears will not get that boost. Uh, I think maybe Godzilla 89 also is medium range. Now that's as a leader. Stats, yep, Godzilla 89, medium range, not close range. So two of the best close range fighters are not getting that boost. What you're going to end up getting boosted by this is like Gigan and I got to find Destroy again. You're going to get like the, both the Gigans uh, 72 and um, 2004 are going to get boosted by this. The Kamakris are going to get boosted by this. Um, Giant Octopus will get boosted by this. Uh, this ability shows Anguirus with the boost, but he is listed as medium range. And this specifically states close range so actually i believe that this video is wrong uh because and gear is not going to get that boost right uh the reason i don't like this ability as opposed to biolantes is because or even kong's so we'll get to kong but desgadora the boost that he provides is maybe like 13 units tops and two of them are like very maybe three of them are very arena viable right it also boosts the Stealth Bomber, I'm pretty sure. So, this will boost your Kamakris, your Gigan 04, your Leo, I think. Me Leo might actually be medium range, too. Now I gotta look at that. Me Le Leo also might be medium range. I think Rodan 64 will count. Yeah, Leo is medium. Fire Rodan, or regular Rodan, is close. Also medium. Oh, no, Reach is short. What is this one? Reach is medium. So, not a lot of characters are going to get the boost um, for the... I lost Destroya again, but the, the, moral, the moral of the story for Destroya as a leader is while the stats are good and the ability is good, right? Like, look at his, his attack time is 2.6 seconds, so that's one of the slower attack times we've seen in this video. He boosts a significantly smaller portion of units than most of the other monsters. By Elante, long-range units a lot a lot of some of the best units are long range. Bylon is going to help them out there, right? And then you have other units like, uh, spoiler alert for G89, can boost any unit above a certain energy threshold for to a certain extent. Same with Kong. That has much wider capabilities than Destroy It. That doesn't mean Destroy is bad at what they do. It just means he's not as good as some of the other monsters. I think if you're making a close range fighter deck, Destroy will be good. If we get some really good close range pieces later down the line, Destroy it will probably come into the meta. As it stands, where the game is right now, there are not a ton of close range pieces being used because most of the meta pieces are long range to medium range, not close. So Destroyer is good, just going to go into the okay tier for now. However, I feel like out of anyone on this list, Destroyer has probably the most room for improvement and it is not something that his leader ability could do. It's just, when will they add more close range pieces? They could make, if, listen, if they rewrote his ability to say can include medium, like close and medium ranged, then this is going to go into the meta tier, right? It would be really, really good. But the fact that the close range pool is so limited, it's so small, and not a lot of those units are totally usable, that's a big L. Next up is Fire Rodan with the Uranium Heat Ray ability. Let's check this one out. So, Fire Rodan, Uranium Heat Ray, what does it do? It costs 2 energy, cool now 90 seconds, deals 350 damage in a fan shape, and increases damage dealt by allied aerial units on the battlefield by 20% for 15 seconds. This is not a terrible ability, considering a lot of really good units are flyers, like Mothra Leo. Uh, Ultraman technically does count as a flyer. Batra is a flyer. Megagirus is a flyer. Mothra uh, 92 just got a very solid buff. She's a flyer, she counts as well. 
this is a this is a good ability. I don't think it is a great ability. It's pretty good though. There are other abilities that'll boost the flyers and more units. If you want to specifically boost the flyers, this is a decent ability. Uh, a lot of the flyers are really good. I'm not going to spend too much time talking on him like I did with Destroya, but I think he's just okay. I do almost want to put him in the why would you do this to yourself because Fire Dan is extremely good on the field. Like, very, very good with the healing is busted, but that ability is decent. It It, it, it is not terrible, right? It, it is decent. It is not a, um, it is not a speed boost. It is a damage boost. Damage is really, really useful in this game, right? So he's going to go in the okay section. I think that I could probably put him in the why would you do this to yourself. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put him at the bottom of the okay section because I think he's good, but he's one, like, I mean, really good. So he could be in the why would you do this to yourself, but I think that his ability is a lot more use cases than uh, some might think, especially considering how powerful the flyers are at this current stage of the game. All right, we got the bread and butter, the tried and true classic beast. Geigen, 1972, been in circulation as a leader since April of 2021, right? Beta. People have been using Geigen for ages. I feel like he's like a uh, like a house cat or a dog. Like we've always had him, right? Always had him in the house. Geigen, Geigen 72, pretty good ability, has stood the test of time. For those of you who are unaware for some reason... The ability is called Bladed Ripper. It costs 2 energy. It has a cooldown of 120 seconds. For those of you uninitiated, that is uh, 2 minutes. And it deals 300 damage in a straight line, whatever. And raises the movement speed of all allied ground units on the battlefield to Gigan's movement speed for 10 seconds. It's a lot. Gigan is fast. Gigan is fast as fuck. I don't think he's the fastest unit anymore, but he is super fast. So, G89 comes rushing down, and gear is... <sighs> I think I just had to burp, but I didn't. Whatever. Awkward. Moving on. G89 coming battle, barreling down the field. That's a fucking threat and a half. And Gearus, and now we got Earth trotting down the field. Ultima coming down, Hedera coming down, Space Godzilla coming down. Anything touching the floor is getting boosted by this and is running right up to your enemy's leader. Now, I will not say that he is a meta leader. For the main reason that he's never been a meta leader, he's been one of the better ones, though. He's definitely a great leader. Definitely is a great leader, right? The reason I don't think he's meta is because as soon as you see a Gigan leader, you know exactly what's going to happen. It's it's the most it's definitely the most telegraphed uh, leader strategy in this game, and I feel like I'm more surprised when a Gigan leader does not try to rush me. So like G89, I know if you have a G89 leader, you're gonna damage boost, right? I know if you have the um, hear you leader, you're gonna all you're gonna absolute zero cannon, right? Very predictable stuff, right? Because you're, you're gonna want to use them. Gigan, I see you with the Gigan. Man, I know you got a G89. I know you got an Angiris. I know you got some big fucking boys waiting to drop. I know it. I can see it coming a mile away. The same way when I fight a Kiryu leader and I'm like, oh, they're going to absolute zero cannon me. I got to beat them in three minutes or less. I see a guy and I'm like, okay, I got to keep some guys pocketed on defense in case I get absolutely bum rushed. I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. And it's not a, it, not all the time is a game ender. It, it can be a game ender, but I think a lot of the times it is just very telegraphed. If you're not dropping anything for a long time as a guy, you can leave like, okay, there's the G89 coming, or there's the Earth coming. So I think he's a great leader. I do not think he's meta. I definitely think he's fallen a little bit, but Gigan is really good. Gigan is a really, really good leader, and he's the first leader on our tier list that is a three-star. There's not many three-star leaders. Three-star leaders are really easy to upgrade. They're really easy to come by their pieces. It's way easier to get their pieces than a four-star. So if you are looking to upgrade a three-star to be your leader, Gigan is definitely not a bad option. Definitely not a bad option. I like him a lot. I do not think he's meta, but he's really really close he's really reliable i think is what it is he's not not the best but he's consistent and he's easy to level up he's easy to get um shards for his stats are pretty good he's got a two second attack time gigan is good 
Geigen is a good leader, he's a reliable leader, and has stood the test of time because people have been playing Geigen as their leader and doing the same tactics since day one, literally day one of this game. Alright, so up next is Godzilla 2004 with the Burning G Spark Heat Ray. Our first Godzilla on the tier list before we just knock them all out right here, except for Shang Godzilla who's later on. But, the Burning G Spark Heat Ray, let's read what it does. It's a hefty, hefty... Uh, block attacks burning g spark heat ray energy cost three cooldown 90 seconds we've seen a ton already energy three 90 second cooldown abilities deals 350 damage and knockback in a straight line and increases the movement speed of allied units with an energy cost of five plus on the battlefield by 50 percent for 15 seconds his ability is literally g89's ability almost the same except this one does knockback and it boosts it boosts the speed of your units not the damage the speed this is another one of the speed boost characters that we'll see is the ability good the knockback is fine it doesn't aoe that's always good the speed boost that it gives is not exactly something that i'm desiring for my lead i'm not really trying to boost character speed and if i am i'm using geigen we just talked about geigen geigen speed boost is cracked he's ridiculously fast i do not need to update like angiris's speed by 50 seconds i want to make angiris's speed the same as geigen's making all of the lead, all of the units with geigen geigen makes all of the units across the board the same exact speed this one and any other percent speed boost one just is a percent speed boost on top of their own that like that character speed. It's not changing everyone to G uh, to Godzilla 04 speed. It's changing them all by it's giving them a 50% increase as opposed to Gigan who's making everyone really fast because they're all the same the all the same speed. Gigan speed boost is better. This speed boost is not terrible. It is a good speed boost, but it is not as good as Gigan's is. Gigan's is superior. I'm putting this one right about here. I think it's okay. I do not think it's necessary. I think his range as a leader is decent. I think his attack time at 2.6 seconds is okay. I think his knockback is fine. The AoE from that knockback is fine. The, the speed boost, there's better speed boost. So he's not great. He's, he's okay. He's usable. He's, he's okay. All right. We got the big man himself, the big kahuna, G-Man proper, the OG, the number one, the cream of the crop, the pinnacle, the pinnacle of leaders in Godzilla Battleline. Godzilla 1989, fucking cracked out monster over here. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the special move. Heat Ray, two cost, 90 second cooldown. Already better than a lot of the abilities we've seen today that are three cost, 90 second cooldown. This one is cheaper. Deals 350 damage in a fan shape and increases damage dealt by allied units with an energy cost of 5 plus on the battlefield for 50 seconds for 15 or 50% 50 for 15 seconds. Huh, what enemies can I give a 50% damage boost for 15 seconds? The 5 costs? Huh, what is a 5 cost or higher? I don't know. Ultraman, Kiryu, Burning Godzilla, Batra, Mothra Leo. Unit 1, the 5th Angel, Geo 4, Earth, King Ghidorah, Megagirus, Space Godzilla, Zeton, all, Mephilus, all, Naranga. We've said it before, I'll say it again. Some of the best units in this game are at 5 cost or higher. Most of them are 5 cost. This will buff a ridiculous amount of characters that are all, or most of them are meta. By 50% for 15 seconds is fucking wild. This is this is an insane ability. It is really good. It's gonna help you take it's gonna help you swing a battle, right? This this will help you clear the board. And let's take a look at his stats, by the way. Mine is level 34. That's 10,520 HP at level 34. At level 30, he's somewhere in like the low 10,000s, right? Okay. Let's take a look at a, a four-star leader that I have. Alright. We'll look at Ultima really quickly because he's he's coming up next anyway. So we'll go to his stats. And as a leader, my Ultima at level 24 has 9,539. So that is another another point for the three star leaders. We talked about it briefly with with um Gigan. I will re will reiterate here that the 
four, the three star leaders, they are easier to come up, come across their pieces and they scale better than the four stars do. They scale way better. It is more reliable to get a three star leader in your leader spot at a high level, like a level 30, than it is to get a four star. My recommendation for new players, I know there's going to be new players watching this video if you made it this far. Hi, how are you? I hope you learned something. My recommendation is when you start the game, you stick with G89. You can level them up. Now, in the beginning of the game, the four-star leaders are going to have better stats. And this is, a, this is like a trick by Toho. Early in the game, the three-star leader stats are not too good. Right? They're not too good. But your four-star leader stats are going to be really good because your level one four-star leader is going to be like 5,000 something. Level five four-star leader is going to be like 5,400 or 6,000 or something like that. When you start leveling them up, you'll notice a drop in the stats. And you know what? It will go up in the stats? The three stars. At around level 18, 19, 20, they start really cranking up points. By the time you get them to 30, they're outpacing the four-star leaders by like 1,000 HP. HP is pretty important in this game. Very important resource. You don't want to be losing your matches. So, G89. This doesn't really need to be said if you've been playing the game for any time. This is one of, if not the best leaders in the game. Very reliable, huge HP pool, easy to level up, an amazing ability, really good energy to cooldown cost evaluation. Just across the board, man, G89 is a fucking absolute beast. Fucking stud. God, God damn. All right, so now we are on my boy, one of my favorite monsters in the game, Godzilla Ultimate. Those of you who have stuck around on this channel for a while know that I am God's strongest Ultima defender, all right? I am on it. I'm on it. I love Ultima. Love him a lot. Let's take a look at his leader ability. It's just called Heat Ray. Most of the Godzilla's leader abilities are some variation of Heat Ray. We saw before uh, G89's is also just Heat Ray. 04s was like heat ray g beam or whatever the hell so let's take a look at the special move details on this sick ass move so energy cost three cool down 90 we've seen that before deals 350 damage in a fan shape and reduces the cost of event battle pieces by one for 15 seconds now had a niche a lot of players get confused i saw literally a reddit post or something recently or maybe a facebook post about this it reads as event po event piece. I'm sorry, not event post. Event piece. And some players who are, you know, a little bit newer to the game think that this might mean the pieces that you rent during in a, the events for the season. So last season, if you used Ultima, some people thought that maybe it would make Unit 1 lower cost or cure you lower cost. That is not the case. It is not meaning to say event pieces. It is effect pieces. Effect pieces become one less for 15 seconds. So Mogera is going to move to a four energy. Dimension Tide is going to become... What is Dimension Tide? Four already is going to be like a three or something. Yeah, four becomes... It becomes three. Mogera becomes four. Psychic Chorus becomes two. Trains become two. Uh, Sande becomes one. And I don't... I think the energy base is a battle piece. It's a facility. Okay, so yeah. So, it's, you know, not amazing. There's a few, you know, pieces that you'll use here. There's Psychic Chorus, Mogera, Dimension Tide. Then you have, like, Sande, the missiles. You can use it on the trains, too. But for 15 seconds, for one less energy cost, I don't think that that's that very good. I would rather, for the 15 seconds, increase the energy production, like with Desgadora. And be able to put more pieces on the field, not just have a piece uh, lowered. I don't think it makes sense that Ultima's ability is to lower the event, the event, uh, they're fucking me up now, the effect pieces, I don't think it really makes sense with his character, I would have wished for something better, maybe like sniping or something like that, I mean he has like ridiculous leader range, like look at that, like he, he will hit units from far away, it, it is very sick, and his um, attack time is really long though. So his attack time is really long, but he has really good range. He'll hit Ultraman, he'll hit Unit 1, he's not going to hit um, Super X, I'm pretty sure he'll hit Manila. So his range is really good, his ability, you can use him specifically to clear out adds from, you know, far away range, or far away... I'm stumbling over myself with this one today, guys. Moral of the story is Ultima is okay, he is not insanely good, he is not so terrible, but he's like not amazing he doesn't really help your deck too much i think that he is um i think i might have rated him a little too high last season 
because uh, my Ultima bias. I do agree and with my videos on him as a leader, though, that there are some really good specific use cases for Ultima, and you can really cheek out, like get a cheeky dub with his his ability but it is hard it is hard to use him and honestly he's way better on the field he's not quite in the why would you do this to yourself category but um man he's close he's really close all right so now we have hetera i like hetera i like hetera as in the movies i like hetera as a unit in this game hetera as a leader is not a lot to be desired so let's take a look at it. So it has the Hedrium Bomb and Hedrium Ray ability where she shoots two Hedrium Bombs and then hits them with the eye laser beam. And it reads, energy cost 3, 90 second cooldown, deals 150 damage two times in a circle, so 300 damage in a circle, and halves the placement time of targeted ally units for 30 seconds. So let's look at the special move, the video again. You use her ability, right? They use it right here. She gives a buff. And that buff makes it so you drop your characters on the board faster. So look at this uh, Mecha Godzilla places like immediately, right? Not a lot of load time. It's all right. Like, it's not very good. It's okay. And this, it's she got a two second attack time with AoE. That's actually not bad. And she's a four star or a three star leader, so this is her stats at level 30, 10,310. Really good. Really, really good. Um I don't like the ability that much. I do not think that uh for 30 seconds getting your units on the board faster is really gonna make a difference. And I know a lot of other players feel the same way. The same thing with Ultima. I would have rather this do did something did something where you were gaining more energy because this releasing alongside Desgadora, where Desgadora is doubling your energy that's a really valuable your energy is really valuable the time to place a unit is not very valuable because all the units place like super fast there might be a few like earth or something or in gears that make a little bit longer to to drop but it, it's not it's it's negligible at the end of the day if this affected um like kids where kids would drop your units faster like half the speed that would be really good that'd be a really good combination unfortunately it does not work like that so i am moving hetero into the why would you do this to yourself because the ability is pretty lackluster her stats are really good her ability is lackluster and hetero is a fucking monster on the field header is really good that long range aoe is really sweeping up people the death on death effect is really really good I like Hetera a lot on the field. I think you should use Hetera if you're looking for something cheap with AoE and you don't really want to use Biolante. You don't really want to use the either the Ghidorahs. Biolante will get the job done. Or Hetera will get the job done. She's just on the ground, so she's susceptible to things like Caesars and stuff like that. But, I mean, at the end of the day, her on-death effect is good and her AoE is fire. And Toho, for some reason, just keeps buffing her season after season for some reason. So, big props to her as a unit. Not very good as a leader. I would much rather run her as a unit 110%. All right. We're looking at the boy, the goat, Jet Jaguar 73. Oh, not 73. Jet Jaguar 2021. Singular point. SP Jet Jaguar, if you will. Salt and Pepper Jet Jaguar. All encompassing strike. This is a fun ability. Good AoE. Let's read it. It's all right. Energy cost two. Cooldown 120 seconds. Don't really like that cooldown for the energy cost. Deals 300 damage in a circle and increases the movement speed of allied long range units or long range, I'm sorry, attacking units on the battlefield by 50% for 15 seconds. Now, Godzilla 04's ability was to increase all of the units on the battlefield speed by 50% for 15 seconds. This is specifically for the long range attackers. Now, you could say that this is um, usable with things like Super X or Ultima, like some of the snipers to try to get them up with your push. But there's a lot of other units that'll get this, like um, Batra will get this. Uh, a lot of units that I can't think of right now will get this shit. Um, Kiryu will get this. Destroyer will get this, Ultraman, Unit 1, they'll all get it. So anything that is long range 
in the in their in their descriptions is going to be able to get this. I think at one point in time this was okay. It was decent. I think now it's like all right. I would much rather have Geo Four boosting all of the units at a certain spot, right, to fifty percent than just the long range. Sometimes I don't really want my long range attackers up close to the enemy, like ultimate super X. I want them to sit back and take pot shots and, you know, kill enemies before they get to them, not be right up with the push. You know, if you're at the end of the match, you could push them up. That's fine too. I, I certainly don't think he's a bad leader. He's definitely just an okay leader. Uh, I'll plug TS Dragon. He's got some really good uh, Jet Jaguar leader gameplay on his channel, so you can go check that out because he's definitely a better Jet Jaguar pilot than I am. But uh, just speaking from my personal experience and what I've observed, Jet Jaguar is like all right. And in terms of abilities weighted against the other, like his ability weighted against the other abilities, I really don't think it compares to some of the things in the great tier. Definitely not anything in the meta tier for sure. All right. You see who's up. You see who's up. You see who's next. You you see it. You know. You already know what's happening. Here you. And the absolute zero cannon. This ability is straight up cancer. I don't know if I can actually say that in one of these videos, but I did. This shit sucks. This shit sucks to go up against. If you are not quick on your toes, you're going to get absolutely fucking obliterated. Let's read it in case you're unaware for some reason of what it does. Every player will have Kiryu. You get him for free by completing the new player missions. Absolute zero cannon. Energy costs eight. Its cooldown is 180 seconds. It's pretty much the entire match as it, this is on cooldown. Depletes 90% of the current HP of enemy units in a straight line within a certain range this is not 90 percent hp like it's it's not 90 percent of what their total hp is it is 90 percent of how much hp they have left if they have one hp and you use this on them it's not going to kill them it's going to leave them with 0.01 hp if they're at 100 percent hp and you use this on them it's going to leave them with 10 percent this is fucking busted people have been complaining about this for months and not a lot of people have been using it because the stats on the four stars are not good my kiryu is level 21 it has 8987 health and a 2.7 second attack speed not amazing but the attack speed you do get a little bit of aoe on that you just need to stall the match you just need to stall the match this works on leaders the ability here the video doesn't show it it works on leaders. As soon as your characters start inching up closer in a match, you they come into firing range. As soon as you hit the three minute mark, you just drop this, hit the enemy leader, and you fucking drop trains on him or Mogera or something, and you win. Like, that is it, and you win. Like, this is an, a game-ending ability. Really skilled players probably could get out of this. You're pocketing a Psychic Chorus, uh, Firodan maybe gets hit by this, and he can die really easily, you're pocketing Firodan, whatever. If you can recover from this really quickly, your your psychic course is probably huge, right? Or your defense, your defensive play is huge. But then you got to be careful because they can drop trains on you, Mogera on you, Missile on you, whatever, Sande, uh, Dimension Tithe. It's cracked. This is a really good ability. I gave it not a lot of love in the last one of these. It's going in the meta tier, especially with the way that now the leaders are leveled up or characters are leveled up in general. A lot more players are going to have Cure You at a higher level. Everyone gets Cure You for free. You're going to get a minimum, I think, of one or two. I don't remember. I think it might be two. A minimum of one piece, for sure, of Cure You. When you just start the game, you're going to get one for the um, Cure You challenges the, for your first three days playing Battleline. Really good leader. Really, really good leader. Um, Longtime players in Wales will definitely tell you that this is probably meta or going to be meta. Uh, I think it's already here. The Kiryu meta is, is goaded and it's really good in Ficked as well, man. Kiryu's a fucking monster. Uh, this sucks. It sucks getting All-Star... Uh, not All-Star Battle. Uh, well, All-Star Battle kind of sucks. It sucks getting absolute zero cannoned. It sucks big time. And that's why he's meta. All right, my boy, my love, we got Conk on the field. We love to see King Conk running around. So what does he do? What does Conk do? He's got Earth Breakability. He uses his axe, his big old axe. He's swinging it around. Let's read it. Cost one, 90 second cooldown. Not bad. Deals 300 damage in a fan sickler. It's supposed to say in a circle. In a fan, in a circle. And increased damage dealt by allied units with an energy cost of six plus 
wink on the battlefield by 20% for 15 seconds. Now, you might be saying, melee. The 6 plus monsters, I'm not really using a lot of 6 plus monsters. Well, guess what, bozos? That's a typo because this shit works with the 4 energy cost monsters or more. You like King Caesar? Buffed. You like Anguirus? Buffed. You like... Gigano 4? Buffed. It's awesome. It's awesome. This ability is good. It's like a miniature version of Godzilla uh, 1989. It will buff a t shit ton of monsters and it will last for a decent amount of time and it's a pretty sizable buff 20 percent damage is nothing to slap to you know slouch about that's like a batra buff right so i like kong like him as a leader i placed him in the okay tier because he's right now he's limited he's not actually obtainable in the game however we do know when this video goes live we know that kong and g21 will be coming back to godzilla battle line we do not know when they will be coming back to godzilla battle line i think personally and you can argue with me with this. A lot of people come at me when I say it. I think Kong is a much better leader than people give him credit for. It does suck that he's a four star, but the amount of units he can buff is really good. He does pretty much the same buff as Batra, 20% damage boost for almost about the same amount of time, 15 seconds, something like that, right? However, with Batra's boost and even Space Godzilla's boost on the field, you're limited to boosting units that are either in A, proximity with Space Godzilla, or B, in proximity to where Batra is placed. With Kong, the same thing with G89 is applicable, where it boosts everyone regardless of where they are. This is good. I have five over 500 leader wins with Kong. I really like Kong. I think he's a really good leader, right? I think his ability is really solid. It is not restricted by range type it is not a close range fighter it is not a long range thing it is as long as they are four energy or above they will get 20 percent boost that is most units that are used in the meta now g89 will boost everything five and up that's pretty much where the meta units are and batra and space because will boof buff them regardless i was gonna say boof them you're getting fucking boofed but um if they're on the field like batra and space because they'll, they'll boof I did again, they'll buff them. They'll buff them regardless of where they are. Or are they, I'm sorry, they have to be in proximity with them. Kong and GD9 will give this damage boost regardless of where the characters are. And because I mean the percentage, I wish it was higher. Maybe the cooldown could have been a little lower. But I think it's for energy cost to cooldown is really great. And then for 15 seconds, 20% damage is fine. It it covers such a wide range of characters that are all super usable that I think that's why he's a great leader. I don't think he's the best of the greats, but I, I think he's up there. And when Kong comes back and a lot of new players have him, I think you're going to see a lot. And I mean a lot of new players trying out Kong and actually seeing some great success with him. All right, we got another OG leader. This is one of the original leaders in Godzilla Battleline and one that I personally used for a long time until I switched to G89. This is Mecha Godzilla 1993 with the Plasma Grenade ability. Now, I don't think the ability is terrible. I just think that the pieces that it affects are fucking garbage. So let's get into it. Energy cost three, 60 second cooldown. Little expensive for what it does, but the cooldown is nice. It's only a minute. Deals 150 damage and knockback in a straight line. Cool. And reduces the time it takes for facilities on the battlefield to generate allied units by 50% for 15 seconds. This is not a bad ability, right? Like, this is not bad. The MBOS base is good. It'll produce, like, about 7 MBOS. If you drop this, you can get, like, 9 or 10 of them out on the field. That's good. The choppers are terrible. Um, but you'll be able to get, like, 9 or 10 choppers out on the field. This ability sucks. Not because it is written poorly. It is because there are two facilities in the game and they are not very good. They are not very usable. The Embaugh base kind of is. The choppers are not. This could be good in all-star battle for certain. But until we get more units or facilities that are affected by this ability, it is going to remain one of the worst leader abilities in the game. I am literally putting him in the why would you do this to yourself? category because your leader ability does nothing you're you would only be using him as a stat stick and i mean his stats are good mine is level 22 these are not bad stats at level 30 he'll probably be in the 10,000s, right he has a 2.3 second attack speed he's not bad he is not bad stat wise he's in in line with the other three star leaders in terms of stats he's just a stat stick though all the other three star leaders you know all the other three star leaders you can use them 
and do something okay with them, except for Hedra. So, like, so half of the three star leaders are usable GD9 and Gigan. The other half, Hedra and Mecha Godzilla. First of all, Hedra is way better on the field. Mecha Godzilla is not that good anymore on the field, and he's just not that good as a leader. He's only basically being used as stats. And if you wanted to just use a stats or a leader for stats cosmetically, use Hedera because Hedera has AoE, which makes Hedera better. I think Mecha Godzilla right now is the worst of the three stars. Uh, I like his knockback. There's other characters that are leaders with knockback. I don't know why you would use him as a leader personally. I, I do not think his ability is all that good. And it, you know what? We get some other facilities added to the game, and he could be good. And then this video will age poorly. Uh, we haven't gotten a facility in at all in the history of the battle line. I don't expect one anytime soon. We have an achievement to get five facilities. We can only get four facilities at the moment. We don't know when the next one will come. Maybe never. All right. We got Mecha King Ghidorah on deck. I like Mecha King Ghidorah's ability. I like it a lot. I think it may be a little bit better than Des Ghidorah. It's pretty good. Let's read what it is. All right, Machine Hand. Special move, energy cost 3, 120 second cooldown. A little longer than the energy 3, 90 second cooldowns that we've seen a ton in this video, but it is what it is. Deals 350 damage in a fan shape and stuns a target for 2 seconds and increases cost recovery speed by 20% for 15 seconds. So this is going to net you somewhere like 10 energy or something over the 15 seconds. It's not bad. Uh, very usable late game, the same way Desgadora is doubling your late game energy gains. This is going to increase it. So while you have a 1.3 or 1.5, or one, it's like 1.25 and then 1.5 times energy regen, you drop this, you're generating energy like crazy. You really don't need the base. I like Mecha, or Mecha King Ghidorah a lot. I think the ability is good. It is fine. I'm putting him in the great tier. I'm putting him right above... Um, Gigan. I think Mecha King Ghidorah is probably one of the better leaders because of the stun. Desgadora doesn't stun, it just does the energy recharge. King Ghidorah will stun. I think there might be a bug with it right now. Maybe the AoE isn't hitting right or something like that, but it has a wider AoE and has a good stun. And you can Sande stun it, permanently locking down uh, any units that come on uh, the offensive, right? You need to play defense. Pop the leader ability, drop a Sande on him, and you're going to lock up that push. It, it, it's really crazy. It's really busted. I don't think he's meta, but he's definitely probably the closest thing to meta right before, like, Gigan. Right? And Gigan is pretty good. Mecha King Ghidorah, like, her, like him, it, like it a lot. Um, super sick if you want to use it, if you want to get an energy gain up in your deck and you don't want to use the... Uh, M, not the Mbot base, the uh, energy recharge base, and also it is easier to get pieces for Mecha King Ghidorah slash King Ghidorah than it is to get for Des Ghidorah. They At the time that this video goes live, Des Ghidorah is not available in the pool of units just in maps. You can only get them during All-Star Battle. So most people are going to have their King Ghidorah at a way higher level than their Des Ghidorahs for sure. Like my Des Ghidorah and my King Ghidorah are both level 17. Maybe my Des Ghidorah is level 18 at this point. They're both level 17, but my King Ghidorah, I have 22 pieces left to use on them. My Des Ghidorah, I do not. So you're going to get a lot more pieces for King Ghidorah than you are for Des Ghidorah for sure. And that I think also helps, you know, helps this case for a better leader. All right. Now we got the best, the best girl ever, Mothra. Mothra 92 to be exact. As a leader, I like Mothra as a leader. I don't think Mothra is the best leader. Mothra certainly at a time was definitely the best when it would make uh, units, I don't know, invincible. But uh, we, we've since grown past that. And now she's uh, pretty good. I think she's a great leader. Let's talk about it. So Life Force Scales, pretty good ability. Two cost, 120 second cooldown, fine. Restores 4% of the maximum HP of each allied ground unit on the battlefield every second for 15 seconds every second you're getting four percent of their health so say a unit's health is 10 right just 10 hp every second they're going to be regaining four health okay it's four percent of their total health this is really good this is really good for uh people who want to play more beefier decks decks that uh rely more on the godzillas specifically right g89 if you're running him in your deck and you don't want to use guy again mothra will keep him alive for a really long time earth this will keep earth alive for a really long time burning godzilla ultima godzilla 04 1954 they all the godzillas especially all the four star godzillas have really solid stats like really good health and uh, damage mothra will keep them alive especially earth mothra will will keep earth alive and the more health the character has 
right, the bigger percentage that 4% is going to be, which means the, the stronger your character is and the better the stats are, the more health you're getting back. That's why a lot of people will will drop earth when you see someone using mothra odds are they're dropping like an 89 with that or earth and they're gonna use a life force scales to keep them alive uh 90 of the time though you see a mothra leader use their life force scales immediately in the match and that's bot but um i think it is a really great ability her stats are okay her attack speed is all right her damage is not very good she does like a few hits of damage though so she's not terrible, but I think she's I think she's probably the last great leader that we are that we're going to be getting. I think that on this list, I think I can solidify her as the last great leader. She is really good. Uh, she has a, a few like really niche uses or niche uses or whatever. But uh, man, she really kicks ass in her role when when you get her to pop off. All right, now we got Gino over here. I'm playing with you. Uh, Shin Godzilla has also got a heat ray ability. This is visually. Probably one of the sickest abilities in the game. Uh, not incredibly powerful though. So let's read what it does. Heat Ray, 5 energy, 180 second cooldown. So very long cooldown, very high energy cost. Alright, let's read. Deals 150 damage and burn to all enemy units on the battlefield. And lowers your opponent's stored energy by 4. This is alright. This is not great. It is just alright. So... Look at this, all the Kamakras in the field, you drop the fire down, everything gets burned for a few seconds, right? I don't really know how much burn damage is doing. You're going to hit everything with a laser, and then your opponent's energy is going to drop in half. Alright, cool. When this happens, this triggers, the energy is still going up. Your opponent's energy goes down after this animation. Right there. When it stops, then it goes down. This is such a like such a good telegraph like a tell that you can use as if you're fighting a shin godzilla nine times out of, t out of ten when a shin godzilla does this your enemy is going to or if you use shin godzilla and you use this ability your enemy is just going to dump whatever they can onto the battlefield before they can anymore so you are effectively telling your opponent here hey i just burned five of my energy drop what you have and do a huge push on me it's terrible it's not like it's not like here you where i see it coming up and i'm like damn i can't do anything to stop this i see this happen and i'm like okay they're out five energy i'm about to be out four energy so the evaluation like i'm not even losing more energy than you're spending first of all right if you use it against me you spend five i'm only losing four i'm still up positive energy right so i'll know you dropped four or five energy right there I should just dump whatever i can in my hand to get stuff on the board because i'm not gonna be able to put them out in a little bit so you effectively tell me hey, I'm using up half of my energy and I'm allowing you to do a push. Not really great. Not really a great strategy there. So Shin is going in the okay section. I don't really like his ability at all. It's super easy to telegraph and abuse it if you're, as an opponent. And it basically just tells me like, oh, I'm chilling here. All right, we got Space Godzilla. Space Godzilla's got that photon field. Now... I will preface this. I like using Space Godzilla as a leader. I think the ability needs some work. Proton Field. Energy cost 2, 120 seconds. It's alright. I wish it was maybe 90 seconds. Would be, probably be way better if it was 90 seconds. Produces 6 crystals across the battlefield and increases damage dealt by allied units near the crystals by 20%. So basically you're spawning the same crystals that you would as if he was a unit on the field. Your units, if they're near them, will get a boost from it. That fire, that Rodan in the video is not getting a boost from it, but the stealth bomber is distracted by it. It's taking them a million years to work through that stealth bomber. So, is this ability good? I think it has some specific uses. It can be good. It's good at distracting Leos, Kamakaris, the bombers, um, King Caesars. You get buffs across the field. I personally believe that he is much better on the field. He will drop one of these crystals something like every 9 seconds or something like that. Maybe it's in his stats page, actually. Stats. Uh, it's not. That's fine. I'm pretty sure it's every 9 seconds, though, that he drops a crystal on the field. Or two crystals. I think that's better. I think having him on the field is better. His damage buff is really good, and he'll always have it up. He constantly has the damage boost up, and your, your characters around him will as well if he's on the field. I think Space Godzilla goes into the why would you do this to yourself because he's significantly better as a unit and especially with the um the changes to the user to the unit levels 
people are using him more. He's a good alternative to Batra. Now that people are leveling him up to similar levels as Batra, you can really use them interchangeably. Batra is still probably better, like the best unit because it's flying and it's not going to get hit by some of the units on the ground like GD9 and Caesar and stuff like that. But the, the crystals on the ground are really good blockers. And it's, instead of putting six of them randomly across the map, if you use Space Godzilla with your team, you're putting two of them in front of your team, which are going to be really good for blocking. It's like two free shots you're blocking. So that's huge. Way better on the field. I'm putting him in the why would you do this to yourself because you should be, just be running him on the field instead of as a leader for certain. All right, boys, we got the GOAT. We got the GOAT. The GOAT. Pulling up. Ultraman is here. I love Ultraman. I don't love him as a leader, though. So he's got the Spacium Beam. It looks awesome. Let's check it out. Let's see what he does. Special move. Cost 4. 120 second cooldown. Not good. We've seen a ton of units that are 2 cost for 120 seconds, 3 cost 120 seconds, 4 cost for 120 seconds is not good. Deals 150 damage in a straight line and allied in a straight line and for allied units on the battlefield excluding self increase the attack power by 20% and the movement speed by 30% for 10 seconds. Good ability. Good ability. Not terrible. Unfortunately, Ultraman is fucking busted on the arena on the field really just cracked out of his fucking mind dude ultraman is wild you could use listen you can use ultraman as your leader i do not care he's a decent ability bro you're not putting him on the field though come on what is wrong with you dog ultraman is so good ultraman is so good i'm putting him in here in the why would you do this to yourself his ability is good you know what i could even i could even put him here i, I i'll even put him like maybe around like here his ability is not terrible it's not. He is so good. I punched the mic. He is so good on the field, yo. He is so good. He is so good. Use him on the field. He costs 5 energy. He is immune to stuns. He has piercing. He has Manila's range. He does knockback when he lands. He's on the ground and he flies. They literally threw the kitchen sink when designing him. He's so good. Just use him on the field. Like, I don't under... Like, I don't know why you would... Like, just use him on the field. Use him on the field. He's better. He's better than as a leader. Use him on the field. He's go. All right. And finally, finally, got the love of my life. My baby. Mwah. The cream of the crop. The creme de la creme. The tower of power. Too sweet to be sour. Ava unit one. Busted. Busted, busted, busted leader. Let's read what she does. It's fucking crazy. Her go berserk. Energy cost 5. 150 second cooldown. Okay. Okay. Valid. Steals 15% of current HP of the enemy leader unit. This is, says steals. It is not giving it back to yourself. It should just say take. It's not like a vampire ability. It's not leeching anything. You're not getting health back. It's just removing 15% from the enemy leader. And 80% from other enemy units on the battlefield. All of them. All of them. Kiryu does 90% in a straight line. Unit 1 does 80% no matter where the fuck they are. Someone is pushing with Earth, I hear? Not anymore. A, a G89 and Gears King Caesar Geigen Rush? Not anymore. Busted. Busted, 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 busted. Really good on the field. However, Eva 1 is suffering from uh, the G21 syndrome where uh, he needs to, or she needs to, ru she runs up to a unit, stops moving, turns to the unit, stops moving, then she fires. Stupid, dumb, bad. She's really good on the field. The fact that she has to do that is dumb and bad. Using her as a leader, she gets piercing. She has a decent range. Uh, she has cool AT fields. She is not immune to explosions though when she's a leader. But this ability, animation is sick, and basically everything becomes one-shotted. So you just drop this for five, you dimension tide for four, and you just kill whatever was in the dimension tide. This is a busted move. Unit one, I do firmly believe, is a meta unit. A meta leader for sure. Very, very good. Man, I mean, look, Kiryu has a 90% damage move in a straight line. You're not really hitting many units with that. This one is a guaranteed 15% damage to the leader. And it is... Um, 80% to the other characters on the field. Now, 
It says steals 15% of the current HP of the enemy leader and 80% of other enemy units on the battlefield. This will not kill anything. Like Kiryu's Absolute Zero Cannon, this will not kill. This is going to severely injure them, so you need to follow this up. Kamakris, Dimension Tide Trains, whatever, whatever. You need to follow this up if you want to secure a kill. This is not going to secure leader kills, but this is going to end huge pushes. End them. This can save your life. The only downside of this is her animation in this leader ability takes forever, and she is vulnerable when she is in her animation. She can be attacked. She will take damage when she's in her animation. You have to learn when to drop this so that you can get the characters to low health before they come to you. And then unit one's range and her piercing will allow her to kill most of these units in one or two shots. When you use it as close as they do in this video, you will be taking damage. It doesn't show it in the video, but you will be taking a significant amount of damage because you cannot defend yourself. So that's unit one, man. And at the end of this, actually, so that is unit one. And this is the leader tier list. This is where I think they all, they all lie. All the chips have fallen into place. G89, Kiryu, and EVA Unit 1, I think, are probably the best three leaders in the game. Mecha King Ghidorah, Gigan, Desgidora, Biolante, Kong, and Mothra are all really great leaders that you do you should not feel worried about using. They all are gonna bring something to your deck, something special, something that's gonna take your deck to the over the edge. And they're really viable in a majority of decks. I would say anything in the great tier is pretty much usable in the most broad spectrum of decks possible. You know, Biolante is exclusive to long range units but thankfully a ton of units in this game are long range and uh, mothra specifically ground units there's a lot of really good ground units to use like earth and gd9 stuff like that and then kong is four cost units and higher there's a lot of four cost units and higher everything in the okay tier is fine i think you kind of need to build around their specific ability to make it usable or they're just bad and then the why would you do this to yourself is mostly units that are um like just better on the field just better on the field. i mean ultraman should i think i think truthfully he belongs in the why would you do this to yourself tier however his ability is not like super terrible if you were to use it it's just not amazing i think it's i think it's okay but i think he's much better on the field just letting you know i do not think you should use him as a leader but in terms of his, just his ability is good it's just he's better on the field so that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this one and made it to the end. I'm sure I'll put timestamps or something down below. I'm, I bet you this is a long one. So thank you all so much for watching. I won't take up any of your time uh, left in your day or whatever, your night, whatever. Good morning, good night. I do not care. I'll see you all on the next one. Bye-bye.